In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. My name is Deacon Daniel from the Coptic Diocese of London, and today I have the blessing of introducing one of the greatest saints in Orthodox history, St. Athanasius of Alexandria. Now, St. Athanasius was born in Alexandria in the year 298 AD to rich pagan parents. Now, although we always call him the pillar of orthodoxy or the father of orthodoxy, we know that his upbringing wasn't a Christian one. And his first documented link with Christianity was as a child watching Christian children reenacting the liturgy and being told that he can't join in because he is a pagan. After watching these and learning from these children, he decided to embrace the faith and was given a mock baptism by them and was eventually allowed to be part of their reenactment of the liturgy, playing as the patriarch, which is a great foreshadowing of his future in the episcopacy. We also know that as a child in Alexandria, which was one of the biggest cultural and financial centers of the Roman Empire, he was able to be a part of one of the greatest education systems in the world at the time and received a classical education, including things like mathematics, rhetoric, and philosophy, all of which we see in his works, whether they be his pastoral works, his letters in the Coptic language to the Egyptian people, or whether they be his philosophical works in the Greek language. Through his skills that he picked up in his education, he was able to bring together all of this to allow him to be one of the greatest saints and one of the most prolific writers in the history of the church. However, unlike most people who received a classical education at the time, St. Athanasius wasn't called to business or politics. We know that at the age of 19, his father reposed and his mother sent him to serve as the deacon to St. Alexander, who was at the time the Patriarch of Alexandria. It was during this time that he was able to write some of his greatest texts, both on the incarnation and against the heathens. It was also at this time that he was able to travel around Egypt and was able to witness the lives of the anchorites and the monks, being able to learn about them and speak with them. One of the most notable of these being St. Anthony, who he wrote the biography of later in his life. It was also at this time that he became a vital part of the church's battle against the heresy of Arianism, especially when Arius tried to subvert the faith of the Alexandrian see and tried to have St. Alexander removed, claiming that he was a heretic. Because of this, St. Alexander sent St. Athanasius to the Council of Nicaea to represent him. And it was here that Athanasius developed the reputation as a key defender of orthodoxy being commended for his defense of the faith, both at this council and in his prior writings. Three years after this council, St. Athanasius became the Patriarch of Alexandria. His ascension was seen as joyful for most of the church, but challenged by some groups who had favored Arius and were continuing their political challenge against the Orthodox faith. Through these struggles, Athanasius was exiled a total of five times, though for this St. Athanasius wasn't bothered. He just continued to pray and continued to write, writing texts such as his apology for his flight, the letter to the monks, the history of the Arians, and other texts during this time. Every single time that he was um, exiled, that he was brought back, spending a multi, multi spending a total of 17 years in exile. And he continued to preach, continued to write letters, continued to promote the faith until his departure on, in the year 373 AD. So after an episcopacy lasting 45 years, he departed and his final words known were glory be to God for all things a reminder of his joy and his faith in God throughout both the peaceful and the turbulent times of his episcopacy. 
Now, when it comes to his influence in the church, St. Athanasius is one of the key thinkers and key writers of orthodoxy at the time and quite possibly of all time. His role in the defense and development of doctrine makes him one of the most influential saints of the early church. And his writing, especially his book on the incarnation, is still vital reading today in Christology and demonstrates his defense of the belief that Christ is co-eternal and consubstantial with the Father, which he argued, of course, at the Council of Nicaea. The work also reminds us of the role of the incarnation in the sanctifying and salvific nature of our faith. In, on the incarnation, him famously saying, Christ was made man so that we might be made God, an expression that reminds us that we are part of this living faith. As well as this, his letters, which remain with us today, are a vital part of the unity of the church and the development of the church in the period after the Council of Nicaea. In fact, his 39th letter is especially important because it's the first detailed explanation of the biblical canon that we know today, what we call the Athanasian canon. This letter specifically separates scripture from other beneficial apostolic era works and says that there are other books beside those which are in the canon, but are appointed by the fathers and should be ready to be read by people wishing to join us, to join the church. And it's a strong reminder of the importance of both scripture and the contents of scripture, as well as the importance of apostolic writings. A third notable impact and influence of St. Athanasius is, of course, his willingness to defend the faith and to remain steadfast in the faith, despite church politics and despite the challenges of the world around us. This is shown in his defense of the faith at Nicaea, as well as, of course, his continuing work, even in exile, to strengthen his flock. And of course, his last words, glory to God for all things, are a strong reminder of his acceptance of God's will and the continual dedication that he had for the church and, of course, the influential nature of his work and his steadfastness in our lives today. Some important reading that people have on this, some great writings on it, are on the screen in front of you. All of these, of course, contain detailed explanations of his lives, as well as some of his works, such as the 39th letter and on the incarnation. So I hope that this has been beneficial for you in understanding the life and the importance of this great saint. And I leave you again with his final words, glory be to God for all things. Thank you very much. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Oh, the